Hi, I'm Philip Duncan with your July Climate Watch update, brought to you by ruralweather.co.nz and our official business partnership with IBM. In June, well, it was certainly a chaotic month. It was warmer than average and much wetter than average, as most of you know. We've seen rainfall totals two or three times the normal amount for the month of June. And for some parts of New Zealand, that means that you've had either a year's worth of rain or more than a year's worth of rain as we get to the halfway mark of the year. So there are a lot of questions about what that means for the rest of 2023. So we'll try and answer that. We may have actually some good news for some parts of the country because we're certainly seeing that our Nino weather pattern starting to show up in the longer range weather forecasts. So let's take a look and see what's happening as we kick off July, a couple of days after the first, the first weekend of July, obviously stormy with snow in the South Island, thunderstorms and squalls across much of the country, all due to this big storm down here. But there is high pressure behind it. And we are going to see a little bit more stability, I think, a little more order in the chaos as we go through July. You'll be able to see that in a moment. Let's kick off though with the El Nino discussion and where we're at with that. It is still on its way. Um, now, look, it could be announced at any time, but when we recorded this, it was still not yet officially with us. Now, it is showing up in the ocean temperatures, but the atmosphere, the conditions not quite linking up yet. So that's the reason why, even though you're seeing this sort of strong El Nino building, there's a little bit of a delay between that happening at sea and the atmosphere responding to it. But I can tell you that in the long range forecasts across July and August, in our part of the world, we are seeing an uptick in westerly winds. And that is a sign of El Nino. Now, as we take a look at the modeling, we're going through here to August, the gray lines from the various international models, with New Zealand excluded, sadly, uh, shows that most of the international community, in fact, all of it, is leaning towards El Nino. That's for August. When you compare that with November, it gets even stronger. So this is building up gradually over the months. It's not something that quickly starts now. It is a gradual uh, build up. And just to let you know, um, with the last La Nina, that was expected to fade out around December and January, the, the ones we've just had, but it took until March for it to happen. So they can take a few months longer than the scientists expect, but we are seeing it building and all the modeling is leaning that way. Now over on the other side of Australia, the Indian Ocean has its own version of El Nino and La Nina, it's called the Dipole. And when it gets up into the positive range, it's very much like El Nino for Australia. They end up being dry on both sides, both the Pacific side and the Indian Ocean side. For New Zealand, that's not a major for us, but some of our rain does come from the Indian Ocean and does drop down through the Australian Southern States or the Southern Ocean and reaches uh, parts of New Zealand from the West. So a drier weather pattern from the Indian Ocean on top of a drier pattern with El Nino, that's a bit of a double whammy. The one positive though, is it does start to fade out as we head in more towards summer. So this here shows you the two different systems I'm talking about, the two climate drivers. Uh, El Nino here at the top and the positive Indian Ocean dipole over here at the bottom. So not good to see those arrows both pulling to the right, but the little bit of good news, and this is a very little bit of good news, but as El Nino grows, the Indian Ocean Dipole actually weakens a little bit. So it will be a positive if this turns more negative, if you like. So we are seeing sort of a double whammy of dry for Australia for spring, but for summer, hopefully we'll start to see that Indian Ocean returning to normal. And just finally, as we're talking about El Nino, it's measured over here in the equator, much warmer than average out to the east of the Pacific, cooling down in the west. So that's kind of what we would see with El Nino, but it's not cooling down much in the west it is still showing signs of being warmer than average and then on top of that new zealand still has a localized unrelated marine heat wave i mean it's maybe a little bit related to the la nina we had but the uh, lack of big southerlies and big low pressure storms over new zealand keeping that warm layer of water on the top and that does enhance our rainfall in new zealand and just finally from the moana project talking about the marine heat waves showing in these areas in orange are still strong. So we're still seeing a strong marine heat wave through central areas of the country, some even up here around Coromandel and parts of Whangarei, and also down around the south and the east. So many parts of New Zealand still leaning warmer than average. So if you've got a slow moving downpour, that could be enhanced by the extra warmth at sea. Soil moisture wise, well, 
not much of a deficit. <laughs> um, blue means it's wet. So the North Island, very wet. South Island, parts of Canterbury, uh, not as wet as they could be, but still the ground is wet pretty much nationwide. So let's take a look at what is shaping up for the month of July. And as we do, we break down the highs and the lows into boxes to kind of make it a little more simplistic for you. It's not a weather forecast, it's just more of a guidance as to where the lows and highs are tracking. Now, I don't know if you remember last month, but the boxes were all on different angles and it was very messy. I think you'll notice more of a theme this time around with high pressure up here to the north and around Australia and low pressure to the south. Now, this map right here looks like a classic El Nino one where you've got this big block of high pressure over Australia, doesn't quite reach New Zealand, and we've got that windy sou'wester. And even though it's a bit stormy at the moment for July 3rd, it's not raining for everybody. It's actually fairly dry. Some of those downpours are a bit heavy, but the actual amounts of rain falling are not huge. And that's because the high is kind of blocking off some of that airflow. So that's a classic El Nino setup. So we move through to the next week, July 10th. Again, this looks like a classic El Nino setup where the high pressure is north of New Zealand and we've got this windy southwester coming out from it. The thing that doesn't really match with El Nino is this area of low pressure. And that could still be encouraging uh, some windy weather around uh, New Zealand, but it could be, well, it's more than likely to be the westerly wind still blowing through. But some of you may still get a little bit of a southeasterly, just depends on where you are. But generally speaking, high pressure to the north, low pressure to the south, and in between, that's where we get a lot of windy westerlies. So our last map here, third week of July, uh, because beyond that, they don't get very accurate, I don't think, you still see that same pattern of high pressure up to the north and those windy westerlies coming out and into New Zealand. Now, highs like this one will also be moving through at some point. So it's not exactly set. This is just three days I've showed you, but it's the start of each week and it gives you a bit of an understanding as to the setup. And so the order in the chaos is that the highs are to the north and the lows are to the south, and we get a lot more westerly winds when that starts to happen. And that's good news for those who are sick of the rain in the east. It's not so good for those in the west, like Waikato, who are sick of the rain. But I've got a bit of good news, I think, even for you. But let's first of all kick off with the rain here. So this is the next two weeks of rain, week one, July here up to the 12th of July, and sorry, the 10th of July, excuse me, and then the second one here for the week following that. Just quickly at a glance, you don't have to get too much into the, into the detail of the rain, it's just more seeing where all that green and yellow shading is. And you can see quite a lot of it in the Southern Ocean, some of it coming out of Queensland and lining up with New Zealand, and the pale blue in the east, that's a good sign for drying out. In the next week, most of the rain down in the Southern Ocean, West Coast gets most of it, eastern areas, I know that's a very small little map, uh, eastern areas don't get a lot. So a close-up version of that, this is the next 15 days. Those two maps I showed you combined into one. Look at this, classic westerly driven rain in that box right there. So that's a change to what we've been seeing for the last couple of months. And for those of you over in the east, the yellow there, 20 to 30, 40, maybe at the most, for the next two weeks. So that is definitely an improvement. And I think you'll be at the lower end of that. Some of you 15 millimeters even. There's a little bit of green showing up there around Napier. And then further down around uh, parts of South Canterbury, similar totals, maybe only 15 to 20 millimeters for the next 15 days. But over here, 300 millimeters possible on the west coast. Up here around the north, the downside for Waikato, is you're in that purple zone, which means sort of 80 to 100 millimeters still to come through. But the positive for you is this might be the end of these big rain events, and I know you need it because uh, I was just down at Waikato at the weekend for the first one of July. There's a lot of ponding on the farms, so that rain is not draining away, the canals are full. So rain like this, westerly driven, not the best for Waikato and the Hauraki Plains, but a lot better for the eastern side of Northland, Bay of Plenty and down that eastern side of the country. Here's just a slightly closer version of it. Uh, you can see all these maps, by the way, on our websites, weatherwatch.co.nz and ruralweather.co.nz to drill down a bit deeper. So here's a bit longer range now. Covering the month of July from IBM, departure from normal. This is not a forecast of rainfall total. This is just saying 
whether or not it's going to lean you know one way or the other and what we're seeing is around the north island it's sort of leaning about average to still a little bit wetter than average i know i just said these eastern areas are drying out but it's just not quite immediate it'll take another couple more weeks so it looks like you know the west is dry and the east is wet it's not quite like that it's more of a departure from what you would normally see at this time of the year which shows still a few more showers over here but for the western side even with 80 to 100 millimeters on the way if that's all you get in the month of july i mean that's only the next 15 days but if that is pretty much all you get that will actually be just a little bit below average so that's what we're saying there might be optimism coming a little bit later on because when we take a look at august you start to see the north island becoming and that leaning drier than average or actually becoming drier than average and the more normal sort of rainfall perhaps at the lower end of the country and then we extrapolate that out for the next three months ahead going into spring and what you're seeing is yeah the north island average to drier than average now the the shading doesn't mean it's going to be you know drought like it just means you might have 20 millimeters less than you normally have you might have 80 instead of 100 sort of thing so it still means there's rain on the way especially where the shading is white which you can see all down the southern and eastern sides of the south island so still some variety but perhaps not quite as many of those big rain events that we've been having so far this year and finally the temperatures well here's something we haven't seen in a very long time near normal at the top of the country it's only about 0.2 degrees above average in the longer range forecast that's another sign of maybe more southwesters and fewer easterlies for the top of New Zealand but the trend further down the country of leaning warmer than average that remains and out over the Chathams you're expected to be the warmest compared to usual one degree above average out there and there could be some parts of the South Island that get close to that as well so we can still have a cold blast it can still be snowing we can still break records for having a cold night or a cold day but when you drag it out over the next three months we are still expected to be warmer than average in most parts of the country but it is good to see at least some of you in the north maybe a lot closer to normal that is all from me for this climate watch update for this month we'll be back again uh, at the uh, end of this month start of august for the next update and don't forget all the maps that we show you in these video updates they can be found on both of our websites weather watch and rural weather and a big thanks to ibm for helping us that is all from me we will see you again in one month from now